Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I am super proud to show you my new Mythical Light Beams pack. Here is a little teaser. Boom! And we're back and before we get started with the tutorial I want to talk a little bit about this pack because as you know I'm always super emotional and excited about my pack. So as we all know light creates a story in images and as artists we love to be expressive. We want to put feelings out there, tell a story, put drama into our scenes, show people what is exciting to us and light with the color, with the texture, with the elegance it has can turn a normal scene into something magical, something amazing that brings the myth alive. But this pack is not just for fantasy composites. You can also use it for event photography, for portraits, for city photography. What is important about this pack though is that you want to use it on darker pictures, so mostly night photography, because of course we see light beams when the surrounding is dark. Let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so we are here in Affinity Photo and you will see how easy it is to use this pack. It is super versatile, at the same time super easy. So we have this night scene here of this alleyway and I also have prepared this um, photo here of a portrait shoot and I want to show you two very quick and easy examples on how to do that. So we go here to file and then to place because all of these are P and G high resolution overlays, right? So in this scene, I want to have a light and this is by the way, the pro pack. You can see there's a lot of light beams in here and there is a wider light beams in here. I want to explain to you why they all have the same color. These are pointing at the camera. So this time we are going to use, um, let's use this one for example, that looks good. Or let's use this one. Okay, so I can show you the reason why they mostly point in the same direction is because of, of course, you can rotate an overlay in any way you want. So this light can come from any direction, go into any direction. Now, this doesn't look right now like the light is in the scene. So how are we going to do that? Well, that is super simple. You simply change the blend mode from normal to screen. You can see already we have some light in here. Let's put it like so. So we can have it, for example, coming from up here or let's just put it in here somewhere. And then what we can also do is when you hold control, you can simply make this wider like this. So this fills out all of the scene. Now, as you can see, the light is kind of not colorful enough to that scene and it's also a little bit too bright. How do we fix that? Again, super easy. This is also where you get a lot of secret sauce in this tutorial. So let's get started. What you want to do is to create down here an adjustment layer for HSL. This is where we're going to change the color of the beam, but also the saturation of the beam, right? Okay, so what you want to do here is that you want to drag this onto your layer with the beam. But look at this. Don't drag it in so you have this long line because you can see this brightens up all of the layer. Instead, what you want to do is if you drag this down, drag it in between the preview picture and the name of the layer like this. So you get this very small blue line that is hardly visible. And when you do this, you can see we don't have this problem with the blend mode. Now, what I can do here is, first of all, I can give my beam any kind of color. You can see I can make it blue, I can make it orange, I can make it violet, any kind of thing. You can also make it green if you want to. There's a lot of possibilities in here. And I can also give it more saturations. You can see I can make it very colorful. I can also make it white if I desaturate it. So then, of course, we have a black and white layer. It's just going to be gray light. One thing you should not do here is to use luminosity because if you pull that up, you can see that this will completely irritate the blend mode. Don't do that. I will show you in a second how you make the beam brighter or darker. So to do that, and this is a really cool trick, 
awesome secret sauce right here. You want to use an adjustment for brightness and contrast because this interacts differently with the layer. Look at this, how amazing this is. Again, you want to pull this in here onto your layer like so. Now it's in here. We double click on that to open it up and look at this. If I pull this up, it makes the light brighter, but not the surrounding of that. So this is pretty important because now you can have brighter light. You can also have darker light. So let's make it like uh, maybe like this and then also give it more contrast. You can see with more contrast, it gets more dramatic. If I have less contrast, the light looks a lot more foggy. So let's go like this, for example. You can see already we have a pretty cool picture. But because all of this is non-destructive, I can go into here and I can say, well, actually, I still want the colors to match the rest of the light in the picture. So I'm going to go like this, right? In a second, you have created a really, really cool image that's completely different. And you can still move this around. You can put this anywhere you want, any kind of uh, like situation or rotation. I can rotate this over here and say, okay, I want this light to come from over here. One thing you want to look out for is that you don't have these edges. So if that happens, just stretch the light out so it actually goes over the side of the image, right? And there's a lot more things you can do with that. But I want to show you some other tricks that this pack has included. So what you can also do here is that I have created overlays for dust and also for smoke. So let's use one of these dust overlays here. I will just put them off on top of that. And it basically goes the same way. So you set the blend mode to screen, as you can see. So now we have some dust in here, but the dust is white and the beam is pink. And that's kind of not so natural, could be better, right? So what you want to do here is you simply use an adjustment layer for recolor like this. And again, put it here in between the th preview thumbnail and the name of the layer like so. And then as you can see already, our little dust particles have changed in color. So of course you can give them any kind of color, but we want to match them up with the color of our light beam. You can make it a little bit brighter or like give it a little bit uh, like more violet color, more red color if you want to. Also what you want to do here or what you can do if you want to is that you select the overlay layer here and then for example give it a little bit blur so that the dust is a little bit unsharp, is a little bit out of focus, right? Okay. So now we have the dust, but the dust is all over the scene and it's maybe also too much dust for our taste. So what we are going to do here is we are going to create an inverted mask. To do that, you want to select again your dust layer, hold the Alt key on your keyboard, that's for Windows by the way, and then click on the mask here and you can see you create a mask that is black inside. So this means it hides everything. And the way to make these parts visible again, of course, is that you use your normal paintbrush. You set it up to a nice size, reduce your opacity, 17% looks good. Hardness zero looks also good, so it's very soft. And then you simply set this to white. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And so you can see here if I paint on that, Onto the mask that is, by the way, onto the mask. Let's make the opacity a little bit stronger so we get some more effect here. You can see that I can slightly paint in these dust particles again. So now here they are and they are just inside of my light beam. And I can also decide to say, okay, I want to have some more up here and then I want to have some less down here. So I switch over to black again and then just paint them out again. And if you say, well, these are too big and it really de depends on how narrow uh, your view is in the picture, how close the objects are to the picture. For example, if it's just like a small object, of course, the dust particle are going to be bigger and otherwise they're going to be smaller. Just set your opacity to 100%, make your brush smaller, set it to black, and then you can simply paint these bigger ones out if you don't need them. That is how easy that can be fixed. Okay. And of course, you can do the same thing with your smoke overlay. There we go. Let's do this. This has changed to text. There we go. So let's choose one of them. Let's use this one here. 
again we have this layer here like so and we apply to it our inverted mask so hold the alt key and press on the or click the mask button down here and then again you use your paintbrush set it to a nice big size reduce the opacity down let's say to around 20 percent make this a little bit bigger here okay and so now i can just paint in some of that fog into my light beams you can see here i now have some fog in my scene so that's pretty cool and by the way if you think well that's nice but my fog is white and the beam is pink again like before what you want to do is to go to adjustment and then you want to go to recolor drag this again onto the layer and what you want to do here is to make the layer a little bit darker so the fog is a little bit gray because then it can pick up color and now as you can see here i can change the color of my fog here of my smoke and now this has a nice pink color again you can decide should it be a little more pink a little bit more red a little bit more violet you have a lot of opportunity to do that here right here's another trick because like i said this pack is extremely versatile what you can also do is create a mask right on your light beam down here and so again this time i didn't invert it because what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a gradient inside of the mask yes you can do that so you can see if i paint this on here i can decide how big the light beam is how strong it fades out and this right now is a linear gradient you can also go to a radial gradient as you can see now this is round and i can say okay I want this to be like so but not really touching the ground down here and now you have created this amazing light that is fading out quickly and not ever touching the ground of your picture so that's pretty cool right that's amazing let's go over to our portrait picture and do the same thing in seconds so I'm not going to explain all of the steps. I'm just going to do them so you can see how quickly you can work with this. Let's put this in here, make it a little bit bigger like so. And then I want to rotate that maybe like this. That looks good. Set it to screen. There we go. Already pretty cool. I want to stretch this out a little bit like so. Okay, awesome. So that is already a good start. Again, we apply the HSL adjustment here change the color maybe a little bit over like this give it a bit more color maybe that's good then again we create our brightness and contrast adjustment here like so make it maybe a little bit less strong and give it a bit more contrast like so that's pretty cool then of course i want to have my gradient on that so let's go like this and simply create a gradient up here so it goes like this make it radial very easy as you can see so we have a round ending of my light beam there we go and already as you can see pretty cool very easy to do next again we're gonna place a little bit of our smoke on here let's use this one this time stretch this out to the areas that we need like so and an inverted mask on that and then I'm simply going to paint this in. I want to have a little bit more of the smoke up here and then a little bit less down here. So that's not too bad, pretty good. Make this a little bit more. Okay, cool. I want to recolor that smoke. Let's make a recolor adjustment. Like I said, I'm going quick because I already have explained everything before. And you can see now the smoke is beautifully blending with the light that we have in our picture very nice very awesome so there you go this is how quick that is by the way i want to show you one last thing you can also of course put a second mask onto your light layer and now i can use my brush make it black and just for example say okay i want to have a little bit less light here on this side and also none on the face so the face stays clear like that you can see that this has a certain effect you can see if i turn this on and off there is less light on the face and by the way 
all of that is non-destructive. If you say, okay, I want to actually have a little bit more light again on the face, switch over to white, paint on that, and there you go. You have a little bit more light on the face again. And this is how quick you can turn a normal picture like this into an amazing, interesting scene like this. Thank you very much for watching. Check out the free version of the pack and have a lot of fun. See you in my Facebook group. Bye.